Um, I was diagnosed with sickle cell disease at infancy. Um, most of my childhood years were spent not knowing exactly what was happening to me. I was in and out of the hospital, times for a week or even more, in and out of the hospital with my mother. She'd be by my bedside. I really couldn't comprehend what was, what was happening to me. Um, my first two years of high school were a bit tough on me because this is when I begin to become aware. I begin to become aware of my condition and just to know what was happening to my body. And so um, I felt stigma at that point and a cloud fell upon me during my high school years. Um, I saw many people around me, friends and family alike, um, pass away from the condition, sickle cell disease, at very young ages, at very tender ages. So I'd live my life with this blanket on me, thinking that, this very dark blanket, thinking that um, it's probably me next. I wouldn't know when I'd just drop down and die or be in crisis and had to rush into the emergency room. Um, it was just one night where I woke up and I had pain all over and I couldn't take it and I'm like, Mom, you need to take me to the hospital. So on admission, they found out that I had a hemoglobin of 5.3 grams per DL. Um, normal hemoglobin in, in women should be between 11 to 13. So this was an all-time low for me and my heart was overworking and the doctors had to keep me. So at this point, I was in my lowest of low. I have been through sickle cell crisis a number of times, but this for me was the lowest I had ever gotten in my adult life. And during my stay in hospital, um, I remember one day speaking to my friend on Skype, my best friend called me on Skype, and the last thing he said to me on the conversation was, Godspeed recovery, Marie. I did not understand at the time what Godspeed Recovery meant. Um, so a few days later, I left the hospital and went back home. I was still in pain, still in crisis pain, so I was discharged on medication. I spent some time at home in just in prayer and reflection. And that's when it occurred to me, Godspeed healing is not really the immediate healing of physical inability. It doesn't have to, when somebody tells you Godspeed recovery, it doesn't have to mean necessarily that you're going to get better, you're going to be healed of your sickle cell disease at that particular moment in time. So um, at my time of reflection, I looked at my life and my age and just basically thought that I'm very fortunate to have come this far with such a condition. I've watched many people go before me, others who suffer way beyond me. and. That's when I got the Godspeed recovery in me. Um, there was a mental turnaround. I stopped looking at sickle cell disease as a disability, but as an ability. I stopped looking at my life as a life whereby one day I'll just drop down and, you know, leave or just be sick and incapacitated. I stopped sitting in the house and feeling sorry for myself and just came out and wanted to speak of the goodness, of the spiritual goodness, the revival that I had received. And so my Godspeed recovery still does continue. Um, I have a very, very positive mindset. Um, I don't believe, a lot of doctors have spoken on my life and said that you will make it this far. They have spoken into my mom's life and said, your daughter or your children will not make it past this age. But the healing for me is mental, it's spiritual. My blood type might still be HBS, which is sickle cell hemoglobin, but mentally, spiritually, psychologically, emotionally, I am healed. And the funny thing is once this mindset came in, I haven't really been sick. I haven't said that I have had to deal with as much crisis pain as I used to or physical inability. I compete like any other individual, be it at school, be it at work, be it um, physically, outside training, exercise, whatever it is, I'll be there, I'll compete like any other individual. Um, for young adults, um, children, 
suffering sickle cell disease and other chronic conditions, it's not the end. Um, don't let what a doctor says to you or don't let what a doctor speak into your life be your life. You might have a chronic condition like myself, but you turn that chronic condition into something beautiful. So don't sit at home and pity play your condition or don't sit at home and be depressed and ask why me. Um, just pray and find the peace in you. I don't think I'd have made it this far if it wasn't for the love of my Father, Jesus Christ. At the end of the day, um, your healing, you, you will only receive your healing from them. He's the author, he's the finisher, he's the giver of help, and he's the giver of life. And so I just encourage you to take some time out of your schedule and just pray when you're feeling low. Take some time out and pray because he has seen me through and I'm sure he is going to see you through whatever battle it is that you may be facing.